So I wanted to welcome everyone today as we talk about supporting staff well-being. I'm Ken Radiola. I'm the Mental Health Distinguished Educator for the Maine Department of Education. And uh, I'll introduce you to the rest of our team today. We're joined by Julie Smythe, our Director of the Office of School and Student Support. We'll be doing our presentation of content. Um, we're also joined by Susan Berry, our Health Education and Health Promotion Specialist and Tammy Diaz, our school, uh, our school nurse specialist. As an overview, we wanted to let everybody know, everybody know what our format today is. We'll be reviewing the strategy of support for students or to staff well-being, participate in small group discussions focused on this strategy, engage in report outs from our breakout activity, and have an update from our US CDC colleagues on tools to support the Mental Health Action Guide and review what's next. As a reminder, um, we wanna make sure that everybody has the understanding that schools are in different places regarding the implementation of this strategy. We respect the position of every school and are proud to provide the opportunity to learn and discuss ideas for growing your readiness to fully implement this program. We'll be dropping the link for the chat uh, in the chat for the promoting mental health and well-being in schools action guide, so people can review this as we go through today's session. It is the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders, and by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. For these sessions, we've established group norms uh, that I'll review briefly. We want to assume positive intent as we participate in today's discussions. We'll be sharing the air so that everybody has an opportunity to both share and to listen. Uh, we'll contribute gems that can help the group learning. And we'll all agree to both learn and to teach each other as we go through our, our discussions. At this point, I'd like to hand things over to Julie Smythe. There we go. Thank you, Ken. It is such a pleasure to be with all of you today. Um, my journey to this position, I started as an educator with Melissa Dubois in, in the Wyndham School System. And Melissa and I were SEL before SEL was even coined. We are about relationships and caring for people and knowing that if you care for students, they will give you everything they can. Um, so if you are lucky enough to land in Melissa Dubois' small group session, she has so much knowledge that she will be able to share with you. So Melissa, so nice to see you. From teaching, I then went to be an assistant principal and then as a curriculum director in SACO, that is where I found my niche because I was all about supporting staff well-being. And I think if anyone from SACO is on this call and I don't see anyone, they would tell you my legacy is that if you take care of your school personnel, they are going to take care of students. That it's about, I think there's even a book that was, was, was written, if you don't feed the teachers, they'll eat the students. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. So this module six on supporting staff well-being is truly my jam. And if beyond these webinar sessions, you want a thought partner on how your district can better incorporate policies and practices, I would love to be on the other end of a phone call or a Zoom call with you. So supporting staff well-being really means that we're not just institutions of learning. We are um, also work sites where we have to tend to the mental and emotional needs of our staff and provide them psychological supports that will reduce stress, reduce numbers of um, whether it be depression, anxiety, so that we can be our optimal selves. I don't need to share with you the data of how intense the percentages are of our teachers who have have experienced anxiety over the past few years, we know it's high. So what can we do? And this toolkit is exactly what we can lay out for you, for your district administrators to reduce that and have some um, strong practices in place. Next slide, please. 
so the, there are really three major takeaways. I hope that in addition to the strategies and tools that others will share with you in your breakout sessions, there are three main takeaways from this module. The first is how important it is to have mindfulness-based training programs. I will be the first to admit that as a curriculum director in SACO, we started with a program that was for students and we soon realized, gee, we really needed to have something for the adults in place before we expected the adults to be able to share a program. So granted, it wasn't a complete flop, but we learned quickly that you really need to have something in place for the educators. And when I say educators, I mean your bus drivers, I mean your custodians, I mean your front office staff personnel. Everybody in that school needs access to tips and tricks about mindfulness. What emotions am I feeling? I mean, we talked about, or, you know, in education, we teach teachers how to do read alouds and to think through them with students. It's so important to have read alouds with your emotions too, of how you're feeling so that they know that you're human and yeah. what tips and tricks and what strategies, because what works for you, yeah. whether it's yoga, whether it's, you know, a certain breathing, whether it's four square breathing might not work for the person next to you. So it's making sure that you have access to a number of different programs so that people can so personnel can find, whether it's yoga, breathing, mindfulness, whatever it might be, um, something that will work for them and that students can learn at, and be their optimal selves when their teachers are their optimal selves. So mindfulness-based training programs, the US CDC has a number that they um, share in the toolkit, but I'm pretty sure that all of you have different programs that you're tapped into, whether it's an app, whether it's videos on YouTube. Um, so I'm hopeful that you come away today with, with more strategies up your sleeve around mindfulness-based training programs. The second tenet that honestly was somewhat surprising to me from the module was the importance of providing therapeutic resources. Now, if you're a superintendent in the webinar today, you're thinking, I don't have the money to bring in therapeutic resources. Well, I am so happy to share that the CDC has shared research with us that just providing access to acceptance and commitment therapy workbooks can do can move mountains for your staff. Um, one of the particular books that we used in, in SACO was Elena Aguilera's book, Onward. I don't know if anybody has heard of Elena Agu Aguilar. Oh. It's Christina Aguilera, Elena Aguilar. I always do that. But anyways, she is really big on um, emotional resilience and she produced this beautiful workbook. So what exactly is an acceptance and a commitment therapy? It's around teaching, just as you teach students to be accepting of others and to give each other grace, it's about giving each other as school personnel the grace we need to do our jobs. So the CDC has shared with us research that shows the immense impact that even doing a book study on a workbook about resilient strategies can make a world of a difference. So we encourage you to do your own little research on hmm, what might a nice workbook be and, and, and who in, in the building might be interested. Even if it's three of you who tackle a workbook together your strategies and toolkits are going to expand and you're going to see a big difference. So that is the second strategy we present you with today. The third strategy is around policies and practices. What does the day-to-day -day look like in your building? Where is stress at its maximum and what can you do to minimize that stress? Um, I am going to give a big 10 points of extra credit out to anyone who can unmute and tell me who this beautiful woman is on the screen. Has anyone had her training offered through the main DOE? I'm going to do some wait time. Skowhegan just had her, but it's almost vacation and my brain can't pull her name up. <laughs> Karen, I love that, that you were able, that you knew though, that a few weeks ago, she came to Skowhegan. This is the Emily Daniels. And Emily is on a long-term contract with us at the DOE, 
providing educators with the regulated classroom training. It is not a program. It's about tending to the emotions that we have as adults, as educators, and giving us tools that if you're up to it, they're tools that can be shared with students, but it's more around regulating ourselves and understanding the effects that trauma has on us. So if you are not familiar with the work we're doing through the DOE with Emily Daniels in the regulated classroom, um, please look into that, but I digress. So policies and practices, what can you, what can administrators and um, your wellness team, what can you model to really reduce? Can you encourage at the beginning of every staff meeting a mindfulness or a breathing exercise? Can you actually get people up out of their seats and doing a stretching um, activity or walking for 10 minutes before the meeting? So really putting policies and practices in place that assure people that their mental health is of utmost importance and that you are going to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So again, the module really spells out some strong policies and practices that you can have back in your locals. And I think the next one is making sure that you're focusing on equity, that we all don't come with the same. And I think Ken did a beautiful job of saying this at the beginning that not only do not all schools come to the same um, or are at the same place, but we as individuals are not at the same place. So your fifth grade team may not have the same training or the same expertise around mindfulness as your first grade team. So how can you think about not only equity on the surface, but equity of experiences, equity of opportunity, um, inclusivity? It really follows the gamut of what people need what experiences they've had and meeting them where they're at so that you can take them to the next place of reducing their mental health um, stressors, anxieties, depression, whatever it could be. So here are some strong implementation tips. The first is ask. Ask your staff members, what is it you need? What could we do differently to reduce your stress level? And it could be as simple as, God, if someone had just brought me coffee on a Friday, that would have done wonders for me, right? It could be something like that, but it could be a stronger um, policy of practice. But if you don't ask, you don't know and don't assume, right? Incorporate opportunities to pra practice mindfulness skills within existing routines. So if you have a Monday afternoon staff meeting, what could you practice for your staff, for your personnel that could then be emulated in their smaller PLC or their smaller department team meetings? It doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It can just be, let's just take three deep breaths together before we continue. And then after you take those three deep breaths, talk about how did that make you feel? And you'll be amazed at how three breaths can just relax the group. And if it's not enough, offer other ideas, but just having a consistent routine that you build into your staff meetings, into your department meetings, into your PLC meetings that can then be emulated throughout the day. And then finally, imagine if you had time with your administrator to truly talk about mental health. You know what? Friday morning, 7.30, bring your coffee cup, bring your cup of water. Let's just talk about the impact of this and what we can do to help each other. And more implementation tips, when you're, I know PTOs constantly, or they want to know what can we do? Maybe it's bringing in a massage chair for an in-service day that you have. Maybe it's introducing um, an app that might cost a little money, but that has some breathing and mindfulness tips and tricks. So coordinating your teacher and administrative needs with your PTOs so that they see that you're all, you know, you could also be supported just as you are supporting students with whether it's fidgets, whether it's, it's it, whatever it could be, um, making sure that district mental health and wellness teams also are offering that level of support, not only to your teachers, but like I said, custodians, front office staff, make sure you're thinking of everyone when it comes to, um, school well-being. 
on that note, I've given you the three major tenets of the module, which are mindfulness-based practices, um, those uh, therapeutic resources, and then the policies and practices. Now let's hear about the great things that may already be in place in our state that you can share with others. The questions that we will put in the chat box, what strategies is your district or school using to support the mental health of teachers? You might think it's a small thing, but it could make a huge difference to someone in another district. So make sure you're willing to share what's going on. What strategies are you using to implement mindfulness practices? Do you already have practices in place around whether it's breathing, yoga? What, it, what is it that you have in place that could someone could take back to their district or their school? And then finally, how are you making sure that everyone is included, that everyone feels that they belong when it comes to these mental health conversations? What challenges exist and how, you know, what ideas do you have on how those could be addressed? And again, before we, we break you out into groups, shout out to this picture on the discussion prompt. This is from our wellness conference. And this was one of the groups who took part in the canvas painting. And lo and behold, it's another Wyndham connection, Tom Nash. Melissa, if Tom hasn't led a paint afternoon for you all, make sure you hit him up to do that because it is so much fun to, um, to just engage in a different way with your peeps in your district. So another example of that. 